We are under the lights this evening as we get you set for another edition of Baseball on the Show. Coming up, we've got a good matchup in store between the Oakland A's and the Chicago White Sox. The White Sox are looking to make history here today. Can they break the all-time winning streak record? We'll see right after this. Carlos Radon is ready to go as he'll be on the mound for the Southsiders. Dan Plezak, what's the word on him? Hey, this guy is one of the better pitchers in the league, and one stat that jumps out, take a look at that strikeout to walk ratio. That's about as good as it gets. And look for him to dominate in this one. Now at the plate, Ramon Laureano. And we are set for baseball here this evening. For Oakland, the center fielder. Here comes the first pitch. Hard hit ball to second. Fielded cleanly. And there's one gone to start the night. And here's a shot of the athletic starting lineup for this one. Giro, give us what you have on this lineup as they start a new series. Yeah, Matty, every person that bought a ticket tonight came to see one thing, and that's the guy on the mound. But I'll tell you what, from an offensive standpoint, this is what you live for. Who's going to make the adjustments offensively to put quality at bats against this guy? Do they have to get him early? Can someone work themselves into a big count to drive a ball in the gap late? I am so fired up to see this offense take on this monster. The average not quite where he wants it, down in the 220s. Five homers, 27 driven in. Into the windup, here comes the 0 1. There's the fastball that gets the lower part of the zone called for a strike. And the slider gets him swinging, two gone. Another strikeout for him on the mound, and boy, is it fun to watch him go about his business. Ah, no doubt, Matty. He's one of my favorites, mostly because of his stuff. You know, he can absolutely dominate on any given day because of what he offers up there. It's just nasty. There aren't many hitters that like to see this guy on the mound. Into the box, Marcus Semyon. No balls and a strike to count. He enters play with 14 home runs to his credit this year. Here's the 0 1 pitch. Hey, this is an amazing inning right here. Attacking the zone, keeping his defense invested. Chance to get off the field super quick. And there are the umpires assigned to this one. Calling balls and strikes is Mr. Carl Dixon. Dan, this is an offensive player's dream to have Carl Dixon behind the dish. He is tight on the corner. He is, D. Rowe. And listen, he makes you bring the ball into the strike zone. Normally, high scoring of games when Carl's behind the dish. Fouled off. Bases are empty here with two men out. And it's fouled away. Weak grounder down the first baseline. But this is a foul ball as the count holds steady at one and two. Now here's the pitch. And right into the shift, but this is foul. Another one two delivery. And he fouls this one off. Neither guy given in. Here's the next one. Hit high and deep to right center. Aquino will get there and he puts it away to retire the side. One, two, three, go the A's. A's nothing. White Sox coming up. 
It's Major League Baseball on the show. Chris Bassett, a righty from the state of Ohio, will do the pitching in this one. What do you have for us on him, Danny? Man, this guy was really rock solid in his last one. Eight solid innings in his last start to pick up the win. We'll see if he can keep it going and make it two really good starts in a row. Now at the plate, Nick Madrigal. He enters play sixth in the American oh, League in the batting oh, race. This guy can do just about everything when he's in the lineup. In the top five in the league in runs scored, and he's a big part of this offense. So there's more to this guy than just swinging the bat. He can get on base, too. First pitch of the at-bat. Into center field, line drive base hit. So here in the first inning, the leadoff man's aboard to kick things off. That's the game plan right there. Elevate the sinker from the offensive standpoint. That's what they talked about in the hitters meeting. And on the flip side, if the pitcher doesn't get that pitch down, there's going to be a call to the pen shortly. And that'll bring up Eric Gonzalez. And he's been tearing the cover off the ball these past few days, as you see there. First pitch of the at-bat on its way. The second for one. Batting third. The first baseman. Jose. I'll bring you. So here's Jose Abreu. First shot for him here as he comes in currently leading the junior circuit in hitting. What a powerhouse season in the top ten in home runs and runs batted in. He's also one of the most feared hitters in all of baseball. Ready to deliver. Here's the first pitch. Gonzalez, a runner at first with one gun in the inning. This one's down to third. Oh, it takes a nasty hop, and he's unable to haul it in. The throw to third, and he's out on a strong throw. Batting four. No left fielder. Gerard Dyson. Here's Gerard Dyson. He swings and grounds it to short, and that's through for a hit. Hey, d -Row, are you aware of this after that knock right there? That's an 11-game hitting streak. You think he knows it's at 11? I think he knows exactly that it's at 11. It starts off innocent. You just want to get a few knocks to get the hitting coach off your back. Next thing you know, you wake up, you've been sleeping easy for almost a week, eight days. Now we're on 11? This guy's dinner tastes different. In now, Luis Robert. He did not play last night, but clearly back in the starting nine for this one. Hit on the ground for Simeon at short. He's got it. And the two-out threat will not come to pass as the inning is over. White Sox strand a couple. Still no score. All set for the start of the inning. And that brings in the big power hitting first baseman, Matt Olson. Matt Olson. Infield in the overshift here. Now the pitch. Outside target here, and he hits it for strike one. And guys, you take a look at the White Sox entering play here tonight. They come in unbeaten and playing well here in the early going. Maddie, this is the best team in baseball right now. I, I mean, just a double digit winning streak that, I mean, maybe happens to two or three teams a year you get this hot. This team is rocking in all facets right now, and they're a fun watch. Here's a fly ball. Well hit. 
A ball that's carrying. On the warning track, he makes the catch. That is big. All right, guys, here's a defensive alignment for the Chicago White Sox. And let's focus our attention on first baseman Jose Abreu. We know the bat plays, the ability to drive the ball out opposite field, no problem. But I don't think people realize how soft this guy's hands are at first base, constantly bailing his other infielders out. And that'll bring in Matt Chapman. Belted high and deep into right center. Looking up is the right fielder. Gone! Solo shot to right center. Number 17 for him on the season. And the A's are on the board first, one to nothing. Hey, that's the price you pay right there when you try and sneak a fastball past this guy. Power hitter, and every power hitter in the league knows you got to start with the numero uno, number one, man. You got to get on the heater and adjust to everything else, and he did just that. So now it's Mark Canna. Mark Canna. As he'll swing and send a chopper out to second. And that gets through for a one out base hit. You know, Dero, the old school thinking sometimes is when you're going through a bad streak like this guy, any way you can get on a little jam shot, even though it wasn't pretty, maybe this could get this guy finally going. Yeah, I can't tell you how good that had to feel right there. There's moments where you slap that donut off your bat, you don't even want to walk to home plate. You're scuffling so bad. Here's Chris Davis now. As he'll cut on and miss it, a good slider at the knees for strike one. First shot for him here with a runner at first now and one away. Breaking ball drops right in the chute for a strike. So back-to-back -back sliders for strikes. Does he come back with yet another? Hey, not normally a good plan to throw three consecutive sliders in a row. This guy's slider is so good, I think he might throw it again. So he ran the fastball by him for the punch out. Chris Davis is sent packing for out number two in the inning. At the plate, Austin Allen. As the first pitch to him is swung on and missed for strike one. The numbers coming in. He's at 255. One home run, nine driven in. 0 oh, one pitch on its way. On the ground up the middle. Throw in the dirt, but a good scoop at first saves an error as the side is retired. But the A's hit the board first on this solo home run. We'll go to the bottom of the second. It's now 1-0 in favor of the A's. Stepping into the box, James McCann. And he enters play today, currently fifth in the American League in hitting. This season really shouldn't come as a surprise to many. We all know what kind of skill this guy produces when he has a bat in his hands. Here's the pitch. Line drive to center field. And that'll get down for a base hit. So he goes after the first pitch, and it's early trouble here this half of the inning. Nice piece of hitting right there. Two seam fastball sinker. He stayed inside it. Didn't have the action the pitcher would have liked. You know, that's a sinker right there, Mark, that's intended to be down in the zone. And this better pitcher better get the ball down because he can't live up in the strike zone. Striding forward now is the D.H. Edwin Encarnacion as he enters this one with an absurdly high batting average. Definitely one of the most dangerous hitters in the league these days. Here comes the first pitch. Hit hard towards center. In there, a base hit. So now to the plate, Aristides Aquino runs up and gets this one down. 
throw will be well laid as he reaches it first. And as you see right there, that'll push his hitting streak yet another game as he has been on fire this month. Now batting, Jake Cronenworth. And with numbers like those, he's putting himself in contention for some Rookie of the Year hardware if he can keep it up. First pitch of the at-bat on its way. Swung on and lifted in the air to left center. Center fielder on the run. He gets there to make the catch, but this should bring home a run as the runner tags from third. And the run will score on the sacrifice fly as that'll square things at one to one. Man, this is a spot where you really want to get greedy as a hitter. Bases loaded, nobody out. You're hoping for that big swing of the bat. What does he get? A sacrifice fly and only one run scores. I'm sure he wanted more, but he's not going to complain about the RBI. Stepping in, Nick Madrigal, one for one after a single this first time up. Yeah, and they take another single right here. That third base coach is dying to wave his arms. I wouldn't be surprised if anything hit hard through the infield. He's going to wave them. Throw not nearly in time as he reaches it first. The third base, number five, Aaron. to the plate now Eric Gonzalez he swings and sends it in the air out to left center and that's in there base hit and a relay to the plate and they're not going to get him as he's in there to score hey this one's a long way from being over d -roll, but that big base hit right there gives him a two run lead yeah then without question right there huge at bat Gives his team the lead. Hopefully the pitcher's able to settle down now. He's got some runs on his back, and he's able to go out and execute. And it looks as though the decision makers in the dugout will give him a free pass to first, so the bases are loaded here on the intentional walk, and the force play is now in order. Yeah, well, when a guy's swinging the bat as well as he's been, this is a smart move. No reason to tempt fate out there. Here comes the first pitch. Sent in the air out to straightaway central. Catch is made. Here comes the runner from third. And the run is in to score from third. Obviously, he's hoping for more up there with the bases loaded, but you can't be too upset with the sack fly. Into the box now. Luis Robert, who's all over the place. Two on, two out, and of course, here in inning number two. First offering on its way. Fouled away. Four runs here in this half inning. Sent on the ground out to second. Throw in time and they stop the bleeding as the side is retired. Nine men come to the plate. Four score. We'll go now to the top of the third. White Sox on top, four to one. Now at the plate, Stephen Piscotti, and he'll start out their half of the third, top of the order to follow. Hey, we're still in the early stages of this one. They're only down by a couple of runs, but it's really key for this leadoff guy to try to get on and get a big inning started. He's ready. Here's the first offering. There's a fastball called for a strike on the inside corner. Yeah. Not where you want the changeup, but he gets away with it for a strike. Ooh, that's a good pitch to take a hack at right there. 
changeup up in the zone. Eh, he'd like to have that one back. Fastball called, strike three, and there's the first out of the inning. Well, it's still early, but it's also worth noting yeah, that man. he'd be in line for the win Number if this 22. keeps up as we take a look at the league leaders in games won this season. And as you see, he's right up there among league leaders in that department. And that'll bring in Ramon Laureano. First delivery to him on the way. Into the windup, here comes the 0 and 1. Changeup gets him out in front for strike two. Wow, great pitch right there, right? Changing speeds. How about that straight changeup? How about that swing? Howdy, if you're waving at me. Hit to short. Reined in. Throw on to first, two gone. The batter number five. Second base. Tony Kemp. So bases are empty here with two gone. And striding toward the plate to hit next, Tony Kemp. Ready to deliver. Here's the first pitch. Fouled off. Good change up there as he takes command 0 and 2. Looking to punch him out again, the pitch. And a fastball called strike three, and the side is retired. A's are gone in order. They trail it four to one. Welcome back. The White Sox are set to hit here in the third inning, and hit is something that they've done very well this season. In fact, with the highest team batting average, on-base percentage, and slugging percentage in all of Major League Baseball, it's probably safe to say they have the absolute best offense in the sport these days. As one player told me earlier, yeah, I mean, you don't have to dig too deep into the stats to understand the level we're playing at. We have a special group, we know it, and we still think we can get better. Safe to say no one else around the league hopes they can, guys. All right, thanks, Heidi. First pitch coming, here it is. This is line to left. He leaps, but he can't get it. It's down for extra bases. Not in time, and he's in there with a double. Well, man, as we take a look at his line here, he might not know all the specifics, but he knows he hasn't been pitching all that well in this one. Sometimes it happens, you start a game and never completely get into that rhythm. Seems to be the case here. Edwin Encarnacion now. And he'll swing and send a chopper to third. Chapman's got it. And the throw to first is in time. One gone. And with one gone now in the inning, let's take a look at the White Sox upcoming schedule here on the show to see where they'll be for the next seven days. Riding in once again, Aristides Aquino. He's ready. Here's the first offering. A swing and a shot hit down the corner. Mm, definitely had the distance, but it winds up a foul ball. On its way, the 0-1 pitch. Swing and oh my! Hit him with the hine! And goodbye. This one ain't coming back. Well, 
this guy's hot right now. Hit a bomb yesterday and hit another tape measure shot today. When he gets hot, he hits him in bunches. This could be the beginning of one of those extended hot streaks. Stepping in now, Jake Cronenworth. Cronenworth. Back up the middle and in for a base hit. Yeah, and when a pitching coach goes to the mound this early, he's probably just looking to reset the pitcher's mindset, get him to forget about the negative, and give him something positive to focus on. We'll see if he responds. Standing in now, Nick Madrigal. As he will swing at the first pitch and line this one into left center, and that's going to get down for extra bases. Cronenworth is on his way home. And a relay home. And he's going to score with ease as the throw will be too late. You know who's the happiest man in the building right now? His starting pitcher. He's got a big old smile on his face. He knows he has a 6-1 lead here in the early going to work with. You can't let that take away your edge, though. Mike Miner is going to come on to pitch here, and in just the third inning, you have to think he'll be asked to eat some innings. Number 23, Mike Miner. Into the box now, Eric Gonzalez as he'll try to hold back on the swing, but he went around for the first strike. A hit and two tries for him so far. Oh, and one count and the pitch. And this ball's pretty well struck high and deep to left field. Gone into the home bullpen for a home run. It's a two-run shot to straightaway left. Home run number 15 for him thus far as they've widened this lead to eight now. Oh, man, he got hurt. His second pitch since coming in, and he serves one up. A reliever's worst nightmare and a big confidence boost to the lineup. Let's see if he can rebound. So here's the slugging first baseman, Jose Abreu, now. Now this one is blasted to left field, and there's no doubt about it. Back-to-back -back jacks. It's a solo home run for Jose Abreu. So he just continues to club the baseball at an alarming rate as they push this lead up to nine now. Well, when a manager talks about hitting being contagious, that is exactly what we're talking about. One guy tees off, and the guy behind him starts to feel a little bit more confident, a little bit more focused. The next thing you know, you've got three home runs in an inning, and your entire offense is off and running. In now, Gerard Dyson. Pulled high in the air out to right field. Dyson. Piscotti is back in plenty of time to put this away, however, and there are two gone. Now batting, center fielder, Louis Robert. Stepping up to the plate, Luis Robert. He was retired via the ground ball last time up. Yeah, I understand that, Matty, but this guy's got burner wheels down the first baseline. I don't think he even concerns himself with that. He has to put it on the ground. That's part of what makes him successful. Hey, boys, you talking about getting your ace swing off right here? That's what it looks like. A guy with Matt. Meanwhile here, this ball's given a pretty good ride out to deep left field, and that is going to clear the wall. A home run. A 
solo shot here to left. One shy of the magic number now. 49 home runs thus far as this lead got even wider. James McCann as he will line this one into right center and this is going to get down and should be extra bases. This will kick up against the wall now. And he is in the second with a double his third hit of the night. Some guys just lay back and watch that first pitch go by no matter what. Work the count make the pitcher waste a few pitches but when he serves up a fastball like this on the first pitch it's hard not to go after it. And that's just what he does. He jumped all over. Edwin Encarnacion to the plate now. Big swing, but he just gets a piece of it. Strike one. One for two in the ball game thus far. And two count to Edwin Encarnacion. There seem to be different philosophies on it. So, Dan, what was your approach in 0-2 counts? My philosophy is this. I think the last thing you want to do is throw non-competitive pitches, Matt. Throw something down in the zone or just out of the zone. But something way out of the zone doesn't serve any purpose. Now Edwin with a swing and a deep drive to left. And it's gone. So a two-run home run for Edwin Encarnacion. Home run number 65 for him here as the blowout continues. These guys are really putting on a show here. That dinger brings the total up to five for the game so far. Amazing stuff today, guys. Yeah, Matty D. How about this, D. Rowe? If you come to watch complete. offense, you pick the right game to come and see. Five bombs from no, one team. Good. Everybody in the lineup. They're, they're making fun right now of the guys who don't have a homer in this one. T.J. McFarland is going to come on to pitch here, and in just the third inning, you have to think he'll be asked to eat some innings. Now batter. Number 43. At the plate now, Aristides Aquino. He swings and hits it foul off to the right and out of play. Two hits and two trips for him thus far. The 0 1 pitch. Hit hard to third. Chapman has it cleanly. And it's in time at first. And finally, at long last, the side is retired. But not before they hang a nine spot on him here to really open up this ball game. Three innings complete. The White Sox lead it 13 to 1. Striding in for Oakland, Marcus Semyon. He leads off this half inning in what they hope will be a rebuttal to all those runs they just gave up. Well, Matt, I think mentally they need to get one or two of these runs back right here. Just getting on the board after getting socked in the mouth by an opposing team can lift the team up a bit. We'll see if they can string something together. First pitch on its way. Now a check swing, but it's strike one anyway, says the home plate umpire. Simeon in an 0 2 hole here. That's not a pitch he misses very often. He knows he should have done something with that one. And right into the shift. But this will be a foul ball, and it's still 0 and 2. 
Nothing in two count and the pitch. Down the first baseline, but this will wind up foul. Still 0-2. Hey, last two pitches back to back off speed, then he's laid on the fastball. He could pretty much do anything he wants right here on the mound. A shortstop behind with a one and two count. Step out of the box, take a deep breath. After spitting on that changeup, you might have bought yourself a fastball. Now a changeup locks him up as he looks at strike three called, one away. Flat out locked him up with the changeup right there. Usually you're trying for a swing and miss when you throw that pitch in a two strike count, but clearly he wasn't looking for it, so it's a backwards K for him. And that'll bring up Matt Olson. And he's a bit tardy there on the first pitch fastball. It's nothing in one. So far, 0 for 1 with a flyout. Here's the 0 1 pitch. One run, two hits, and no errors in the ballgame for the A's so far. Swing and a miss on the fastball that time, out number two. Certainly not showing any signs of intimidation with these middle of the order guys. That's back to back K's. And the three and four guys are harmlessly back in the dugout. So that brings up the always intense Matt Chapman. And it's fouled away. Perhaps he can drive another one out of the park just like he did back in the second. Into the windup, here comes the 0-1. Hit the other way out toward right field. Right fielder giving chase, and this will get all the way to the wall now. So some life with two away as he's into second with the opposite field double. And with that, we take a look at the A's leaders in that category, and sure enough, his name is right there at the top. to the plate now Mark Canna as he'll get a slider up that time but he swings through it for the first strike runner in scoring position with two gone now the 0 1 a swinging strike and now it's 0 and 2 Canna stands 6 2 as you see him in the right handed box he was a first round pick during the 2014 draft. Yeah, he has turned himself into a really nice ball player. I wouldn't put him on a superstar level, but you know what? They didn't miss with this pick either. You go into high rounds and you carve out a career the way this guy has, nice pick. Now a bluff back to second as he'll just hold on to it. And he struck him out, his seventh of the ball game, and that ends the inning. Danger averted following the two-out double. We're back to Friday Night Baseball on the show after this. Just about set to go for the last of the fourth, but before we do that, here's Heidi Watney. Thanks, Matt. I had a chance to talk with White Sox manager Rick Renteria between innings about his thoughts on his lineup's performance. And flat out, he was very pleased with the quality of their at-bats. He said their ability to get on the attack and chase the opposing starter from the game prior to the fourth inning obviously sets them up nicely for the rest of the game. Now, he just hopes they can keep that same focus at the plate in the middle and late frames, Matt. All right, Heidi, thank you. Digging in and looking for more, Jake Cronenworth. He singled his last time up. Even though they're up by a boatload early on in this one, you can't get complacent and get lazy. They got to keep the gas pedal down because this team that they're playing can strike and score a lot of runs too. Hit softly on the ground to first. And a good throw gets him one gone. And there are the final numbers for the Oakland starter. Certainly not the night he wanted to have. 
This was a tough one to swallow. You could see he was in a heap of trouble right from the beginning, in and out of jams the first couple innings, and not able to get out of the third inning. Certainly not one of his better performances. He comes set. Here's the nothing and nothing pitch. Bases are empty, one man out. Tried to crush that ball and now perhaps needs to shorten up with two strikes. Here comes the 0 2 pitch to short, taken in by Simeon. Throw to first will get him. Already two away here in the home fourth. The third baseman, number five. Eric Ready to take his hacks again. Eric Gonzalez as he'll look to follow up the two run homer he launched over the wall last time up. Yeah that last at bat daddy he turned that fastball around. He didn't hit it a ton he didn't hit it a country mile but hey listen a home run is a home run. Line drive and that's a base hit in the center field. So that means Jose Abreu will come to the plate here. Damn, with that single, he's now three quarters of the way to hitting for the cycle. Toughest one still on the shelf, though. He's got to get a triple. Yeah, that you've said it, Dero. That's one of those that's either got to hit right down the line or one of those tweeners in the gap. He has enough speed, so if he can find a gap or find one down the line, maybe he can do it, and he's going to at least get one more at bat in this one. He homered back in the third inning in this one. Ready with the nothing and one pitch. Here's a swing and a long drive high in the air and deep to center field. Loriano retreats to the track and he'll put this one away. So a sigh of relief as the side is retired. Welcome back. Heidi Watney standing by as we get set for the top of the fifth. Well, Matt, I talked to manager Bob Melvin during the break about his thoughts on the A's hitters to this point. And he told me that they have to find a way to be more patient at the plate. It's been a struggle for them to get anything going. And he said they just seem way too anxious right now. The numbers back that up, too. They've swung at the first pitch more than 70% of the time in this game. So their focus going forward is to be a little bit more relaxed and willing to let the at-bats come to them. The Matt? Thank you, Heidi. Great. Now here it comes. Chris Davis is in to start things off here as he looks at a cold strike. It's nothing in one. Nothing in one count. Here it comes. Hey! Got him. And that's eight strikeouts now for him in the ball game. So yet another strong outing for him tonight as we show you the league leaders in ERA. And as you can see, he currently ranks second in the AL in that department. Now at the plate, Austin Allen. He got on top of one and was a ground out victim last time. Infield shifted well to the right. Here's the first pitch. In there, no balls and a strike. Strike two as the fastball is let go. His command has been outstanding so far, hitting nearly all of his spots, and that's been a big factor why he's been so successful up to this point. One out, nobody on. And he rings up another one, make it nine strikeouts for him in the game. Wow, talk about mowing him down. How about two strikeouts on six pitches? He isn't messing around, and these last two batters have had no answer for what he's throwing up there. So that'll bring up Steven Piscotti. As he'll take a look at a pitch too low, it's ball one. Hey. 
Here's a changeup that's right there, one and one. Outside, two and one. Sometimes it can be difficult for a pitcher. You're facing a guy that's not known to be a big stick in the lineup. Sometimes the toughest thing is to be aggressive and throw strikes. Hit on the ground to third. Right to him. Throw over to Abreu is in time, and with it, the side is retired. One, two, three, go the A's. And as you can see, they are way behind. Standing in, Gerard Dyson. And to start out the inning, it looks like they've decided to stick with the same reliever out there, Dan. They have, Matt. I think the way he pitched the last inning kind of inspired that. But it's not uncommon for relief pitchers to have troubles after they sit and watch their guys swing the bat a bit. We'll see if he stays as sharp as he was before. 